Hey, I'm John Bollinger with Premier Guitar. I am here in Nashville, Tennessee with Russell Lissek of Block Party. Russell, Hi. thanks so much for joining us, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. I It's an American-British thing, but I am having trouble pronouncing your last name. Could no, you, you, you nailed it, man. Do, you nailed did it. I nail it? You did. Nailed it. All right. Thank you, Russell. You're too kind. Hey, tell <laughs> me about this Telecaster. It looks like an old friend. Um, yeah, I got this kind of in 2004, I think, when we uh, when we first signed a record deal and got like, an, an advance, a bit of money. So, I mean, it wasn't super expensive or anything, but it was just the kind of the first American Fender. I oh, bought. cool. And um, yeah, it's been my favorite ever since. Now, that's the way to spend a record advance on gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah rather than uh, <laughs> other gear. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very cool. <laughs> so, um, tell me about it. Have you changed it over the years? Not really. I think. Got, um, this is yeah Seymour Duncan pickup. Oh, cool! And some stickers. Yes. Just kind of come, come and go over the years. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that that that's it. It was it was good as it came. Otherwise, I you know, probably brought the action down a little. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. Definitely that's high cool. mileage on that. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's got a few kind of cracks around around the place, but you know that kind of yeah. Adds yeah. to the appeal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, the I dig the intonation. These are very, very solid with the newer sort of the th uh, the three barrel. Yeah, and it's always been my kind of favorite to anything that's a bit more intricate. It's always it always feels easier to play on this guitar than, right. than anything else. Right. Very cool. Very cool. So that's your number one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what is your number two? What's your other go to? Um, I mean. <sighs> I don't really have a, a, a number two, like this is number one. I have, um, what do I have? I have a Strat, which I use, I've only really started using recently. Okay. Hey, let's let's look at it, can we? Uh, um, yeah, I don't know where the Strat is, is it in the least vicinity? least you have a Strat handy? Oh, nice. Oh, very Jimi Hendrix, nice. Yeah, it's just, you know, your classic yeah. American Strat. Um, again, it just feels nice to play, it's just, that's always, Kind of the thing for me, even before right. I plug in, how it feels to play on unplugged. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of you know, if it doesn't feel good, then it's out of the running. Whereas everything else, you can modify it to a degree to, sure. make, it, to make it work for you. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so I've started using that. I mean, I, I used it in the studio on other records, mm -hmm. but um, this is probably the first uh, like touring cycle that I've started using it live. Just, mm -hmm. you know, for a bit of different tone. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just change up for, for certain songs, but for the most part, you're on the Yeah, tone. yeah. It's like, I mean, there's a couple of songs, if the tuning's different, it's generally easier to switch guitars. Sure. Than to kind of spend two minutes tuning, which right. is so captivating for the audience. <laughs> right. So, um, right. Yeah. So what would be like, what's another guitar that you're touring with? That, uh, um, well, there's this, another telly over here. Oh, cool. Great, that's leaf. Um, oh yeah. Oh cool. Yeah, so this is one that's been modified. Um, it's got like a, uh, a toy inside, basically. Oh really? And you press this, uh, you can't hear it. <laughs> but I, uh, it's on a look of a loop of different noises. Really? Uh, yeah, and I just use that. Hey. In a solo. Would you? We've got to actually hear this. Would you yeah, 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 me? Uh, okay. Mute okay. Here. Yeah, if you've Sorry. gone to the trouble of routing a hole in that guitar <laughs> to put a toy in it, we've got we've got to hear that. Yeah, I mean it kind of affected the general sound of the guitar, so I didn't really use it for anything else. I mean it sounds fine. But... Yeah. And then doing that through like loops and pedals and stuff is kind of that is great. It's so fun. is it? So just the toys in there and the pickups pick it up. Yeah, it's it's, it's under like this section, huh. and there's like a nine volt battery in there as well, which is powering the remainder of the toy. So um, is that a guitar thing or just a toy that you found? In it, yeah, it was just a toy I found like years ago. I've had this for quite a while, but huh. I only just started using it again recently because. Uh, one of the new songs from the record. Yeah. I just, you know, I, I hadn't used this guitar for years and I just remembered it and I was like, 
Uh, I think it sound, probably sounds a little different what we did on the record, kind of using other studio effects. Yeah. And I was thinking, how, how can how can I do that live? And then, and then I remembered this, and I kind of thought, you know, that's as close to a kind of video game sound as you can get out of a guitar. Very cool. Can you uh, like show how you'd run it through some of your effects? I gotta. Um, I kind of want to yeah. hear it. Just put it's just so on. weird. <laughs> Yeah, even just a bit of delay and it sounds kind of cool. That is awesome. That's a great idea, man. Very yeah, cool. cool so. All right. All right. Fender, maybe the Fender will do your own signature model with yeah, the weird yeah, that, that toy cool. in it someday. Cool. <laughs> okay, well, that's cool. That's a good guitar to end on. Let's get into uh, amps. Looks like you're traveling very simply. Here. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, this was what we got when we first signed. I think even before... We signed our first record deal. We, um, our manager bought us these amps. Oh, really? we, we didn't have any money then. Um, yeah. I didn't really know much about amps. I think we we were, we were probably traveling with like, um, uh, like a pair of little PV amps, yeah. you know, like practice amps. Yeah. When well, you were really we young, when you all got signed, right? Um. Yeah. Well, no. I guess we were like, like 21, 22. That's pretty young. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, we didn't have any money, yeah. so um, we were just using what we, you know, what our parents had bought us. Right. And then, um, you know, we started kind of doing proper shows, and, and our manager just kind of said, you know, you need some better amps. Right. And uh, yeah, and, and he just recommended these, and he he's a guitarist as well, so you know, we we, we trusted his judgment and. Yeah, it was a good shout. Yeah. Kind of, uh, so is this the same amp you've had the whole time, or is this a it's, newer... It's not the... It's probably not the exact physical one. We've got, right. like, lots of them. Sure. We've got backups, and then... Yeah, yeah the it, Hot Rod Deluxe, cool. These probably live here in America, and then we have more back in the UK. Oh, okay. To, which travel around Europe, because shipping yeah. amps is kind right. of expensive you, you could buy a hot rod deluxe for less than you could ship one yeah back and forth and i mean it's, it's also a good amp logistically just right. because when, when you play like festivals and things yeah and you, and you have to fly into places you know sometimes you, you can't take much gear with you you have to take what you can take on a plane right you know some guitars and stuff so you know using an amp that you can hire pretty much anywhere in the world is, yeah is good um yeah, I mean, there's, I've got another amp. It's not here. It's um, Audio Kitchen, which is um, it's like a boutique amp from the UK. Oh. But I think quite a lot of people use them. I think I think Kings of Leon use them, oh, and, cool. and Arctic Monkeys, and, and and they're really cool. But it just I was using it sometimes in the UK, but yeah, it, it just kind of came down to the practical elements of right. Like, I'm using one amp for some shows and then I'm using this amp for other shows and, and we do spend quite a lot of time here in the States as well so it just kind of made more sense to have the, the same amp. One consistent. Also, these have um, like dual inputs which are both the same because most other amps even if they have two inputs the, the, the channels sound different Yeah. and, and I wanted uh, two channels that sound the same because my pedal board is kind of really complicated that's a perfect segue <laughs> let's get into the pedal board okay russell very impressive pedal board tell me about this whole this whole mess yep uh so start at the uh, left end uh we have the other yeah, electro harmonics memory man cool which is which is nice got a nice tone which they don't seem to have on the uh, the newer ones which are kind of smaller i don't know if they're still analog or not I don't know. They, they sound different, though, so I've got They do. Three they do those. sound different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in, in reserve. Um, yeah, at the front, it's just kind of a bunch of boss pedals. Um, so, yeah, so what are we running left to right? Yeah, I mean, this is uh, just one of the, the digital delays. This is, like, just for loops. Um, oh, okay. Like, just, oh. just, just stuff like that. That one's just always set to loops. Oh, I know. cool. If I ever need to loop anything, it's always at the end. Um, reverb. Cool. And so there's two delays here. One's uh, DD5, which they also don't make anymore. So I've also got a stockpile of them because they have um, like a backwards effect. Yeah. Which the others don't have anymore. They 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 have 
a backwards effect, but it's not the same. It doesn't play the forwards as well. It just plays the backwards. It doesn't play the uh, like the dry. It only plays the wet. So do you have it on the backwards setting now? Uh, no. So like, I kind of want to yeah. hear it. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, and the, and the new ones don't do that. So That's cool. also there's. So many of our songs have like different delay tempos and things. It's kind of uh, good that I can like 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 one song will have two different delay settings. So one's doing one and one's doing the other. And um, yeah, I spend a, a lot of time between songs, kind of changing settings for things. So you don't use a tap tempo. You do them by. Uh... Yeah, everything. Uh, I mean, there are songs with specific tempo things that we'll probably get to further along but yeah th these ones oh. they're kind of ballpark tempos yeah, just they, they don't need to be like locked in spin and hope and yeah okay. yeah I, I, cool. I know by eye kind of all the settings and, and, yeah. and in my head so they're always in the kind of general vicinity cool um, what's the weird mystery one next to it yeah this one well this one's connected to this one um, which is kind of custom made um, I designed it and then um, a, a friend who's helps make various things actually built it um, it's like two delays so that uh, they can be set at different tempos and can immediately switch from one to the other oh whilst also there's no tails so they oh well wow. kind of uh, I'll, I'll show you one of our songs called octopus which is basically the whole reason that I built the pedal um, That is great. And then, yeah, so the, the, that's just there because it's uh, easier for me to press like every beat rather than stand on one foot trying to press that. Which right. Causes my calf to <laughs> collapse. That's great. Very video game-ish. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think video games are probably <laughs> very influential uh, to me. Huge influence on your work. Yeah. That's great, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Wow, pedal. This is just because this wire you have to um, like push in to turn it on and off yeah which is kind of annoying I always found so that's just like to turn it on and off oh okay uh, on cool time. oh cool cool okay um, yeah a couple of pitch shifters here which again kind of have various settings that get fiddled with um, during songs but there's yeah there's quite a few songs that have um, like use them both so, um, like, like, like wine will be going up. Cool. And I've, I, I've got a whammy pedal as well, but I, I prefer these. And I, everyone, you know, loves the whammy pedal, and it is cool, you know, and it sounds very distinctive. But I prefer the glide on this. It, it, it's so smooth, you know. It's it's it's, it's digital. And yeah. Then, uh, yeah, I, I just prefer that and... Cool, yeah, yeah it sounds great. A lot of use of it. And this is like a replica of a Roland B bar distortion pedal, which is mm. from the 80s. Um, yeah, they're, they're really hard to come by, they're really expensive. I've got the real one, which I used in the studio, but I don't want to bring it on tour because I've only got one. Sure. And it's expensive and I don't want it to get broken or whatever. But um, a, a friend uh, built a duplicate for, you know, he, he got the, the, the blueprints somehow on oh. the internet and like replicated it and it sounds, you know, 95% oh, the same, really? which, well, is, that's great. which is awesome. So, yeah. um, Very cool. Yeah, just love a distortion. Um, mm. This isn't usually here, it's just there for messing around at the moment. Okay. Um, volume pedal. Well, and that's where you come into the rig right there, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's technically the start, even though it's physically in the middle. Mm -hmm. okay. um, yeah, Electro Harmonix Pog, which, yeah, we've been using a lot on, a, on this record. You know, it's got a really distinctive sound. Um, oh, yeah, they're great. I've really got into the kind of the filter element of it. Um, Oh, cool. yeah, you can make kind of like really keyboard type yeah. sounds. Um, so do you do that? Do you manipulate it by hand while you're playing? Yeah, like I love that? hand. 
of the... Sorry, we've totally got that light right there. So I've got like a remote for it, which oh, cool. I can't use on this guitar because it sticks onto the other guitar, but this, oh. this, this clips on. Okay, so like you stick it on and then... Yeah, so that, that is the filter so I can play oh, okay. and still do oh, okay, the filtering cool. by hand. Oh, that's a great idea. Which is cool. So, because I, I, I started out and I was doing it on the floor, but I was spending like the whole song on the floor, which is kind of yeah. awkward. And then I had it on a desk, which was fine, but it kind of looked a bit lame. And I thought, yeah. you know, it'd be cool to be able to do it like literally on the guitar. Right. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty handy. That's great. Um, yeah, there's uh, Eventide here, which is a really kind of synthy sounding pedal. Um, I mean, it does loads of different stuff. I've only got a couple of things kind of stored on it at it's the moment. It's kind of good, weird. Like, which is a real kind of pheromon. Right. Type. Very Star Trek, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I like, you know, being able to make sounds which you wouldn't traditionally associate with guitar. That's, you know, that's, I find that interesting. Yeah, um, that's great. This is the Electro Harmonic Super Ego, which I've also been using as a loop pedal because it, it loops, but in, um, like it doesn't loop like a riff, it just hold, it kind of sustains a chord. Oh, okay. Um, just like that. And then, and then you can do stuff with that. Very it's cool. Kind of, there's lots of potential with that, and you can play over it as well. So. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, the slicer here, which is like a tremolo, basically, but I've got it connected to the MIDI, so it's uh, synced up with Louise on the drums. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, so we can kind of yeah, then we can have some perfectly kind of pulsing things that are in in time. I always wondered. Uh, like how soon is now by the Smiths? I, I always wondered how that the, they actually played that live, right? Like in the eighties, because it's so based around that tremolo sound. I don't know. Maybe the drummer just listened to the to the, the guitar and played yeah. on to the guitar. But yeah, I, I was always curious about that. So, um, but yeah, this kind of yeah, like with some of the delays, you can get away with them being a little bit out. But when there's really kind of specific locked-in things, this this is kind of cool for that. Um, and then, yeah, and then this is uh, Line 6 M5, which has a bunch of different sounds in. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I got this by accident because uh, I was trying to find a, um, a, a tremolo pedal that, that, that could had a BPM counter on it because mm -hmm. I, 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 I didn't want to use MIDI. I, I don't like MIDI, really. It's kind of unreliable I find so sure. but I just couldn't find one that had a, a real tap uh, kind of that you could adjust to precise BPM right. which is annoying but I, I, I bought it before I realized that then I found it actually had some other kind of cool sounds on it um, which you know you can combine things um, like we've got a song called uh, Virtue which you know has a really kind of pulsing keyboard sounding riff which is actually good the guitar, it's just like. But then you add um, like the tremolo. And then you add that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it makes something very, right. really simple sound really big and dramatic. That's so cool. You know, and when you explain it, it's not all that complex. It's not. The, the, the complex part really is is kind of like the rooting of everything. Um, so up here we've got all these kind of channel selectors which, right. which are linked into different pedals and, and put them onto different channels, mm -hmm. kind of like mid-song or, or for each setup. That's really complicated and yeah. confusing. Like, I, I don't know if you can see the back of it, but there's, there's a lot of leads going in there, and then um, the diagram of the routing is. I, even I don't. I don't really fully understand it. Like I, I knew what I wanted, and um, right. our friend back in the UK and, and Leaf, our guitar tech, kind of 
between the three of us managed to all get it working. But That's great. I don't know if anyone truly understands it, but <laughs> I, I know how to play all the songs with it. So yeah. Um, yeah, and that's, that's, that's kind of the gist of it. I, I, well, I don't want it to get any bigger. Right. Yeah, that is I've actually taken big. some things off, actually. L last time around, there was some other things, and I got rid of things to put other things on rather than just keep piling things on top. Which I think is a good way to go, because yeah. some people just keep like building, and they quit using things that they have yeah, on there. Yeah, yeah, no, every, everything on here gets used. Yeah. Like, every single thing gets used. How cool. So, yeah. Well, man, thanks for uh, taking us through this. Congratulations yeah, and uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy your never-ending tour. Yeah, thank you.